Now, you might have heard this term, a cube is a cube, referring to psilocybe cubensis and basically meaning that any type of psilocybe cubensis is the same as any other, or it will have the same effects. A cube is a cube. So even though some people will say golden teacher, which is psilocybe cubensis, might have different effects than something like Jedi mind trick, which is also psilocybe cubensis, at the end of the day, they are the same. A cube is a cube. And the difference really comes from the set and setting and nothing to do with the actual mushroom. Of course, many people disagree with this and would say that that a cube is not in fact a cube. So I wanted to dig in a little bit and see if it's feasible that different strains of mushrooms could have different effects based on potentially the different compounds that are inside of them through something called the entourage effect. Here are some high level thoughts on that. Now, first of all, the level of psilocybin can vary wildly between different strains, but not only between different strains, also between different mushrooms of the same species, even between different parts of the mushroom. It depends on where the mushroom was harvested, what substrate the mushroom was growing on. A million different things can change the level of psilocybin content in the mushroom, which can obviously have an effect on the effects of that mushroom. And it's not just a little bit of a difference, it's actually a lot. There was this paper that came out not too long ago, I think this was, uh, within the last year anyways, and they took a bunch of different mushrooms, not only different psilocybe cupensis, but a bunch of different psilocybin containing mushrooms and tested the level of active compounds inside of those. And this is the chart that they had here. And if we look at psilocybe cupensis, you can see that the level of psilocybin varies all the way down from 0.651 milligrams per gram all the way to 3.509 milligrams per gram. And to be honest, this was a little lower than I thought. I always kind of thought like the rule of thumb was that basically there's 1% psilocybin content, meaning this would be somewhere around 10 milligrams per gram. Um, but still the important thing to take away here is that is a huge range, right? The difference between 0.651 and 3.59 or 3.509 is basically five or six times which can easily be the difference between, you know, kind of a microdose, not really feeling much to holy moly, this is quite the, quite the experience. So just within psilocybe cubensis and just within psilocybin within psilocybe cubensis, there can be that wide of a range. So that is a definite point for the different strains have different effects crowd, but they didn't only test different strains in this paper, they tested different species. Uh, one of which here is psilocybe semilanciata, which is, also known as the Liberty Cap, which grows wild. Um, if you look at the range here, it's even wider. It goes all the way from 1.28 milligrams per gram, all the way up to 11.421 milligrams per gram. So if you picked a random Psilocybe semilanciata or a random uh, Liberty Cap, one could have 10 times more psilocybin than the other one. Again, depending on a number of different factors, but that alone is, is pretty wild and definitely I can see why people would think that different mushrooms have different effects just based on of this. But it gets even more complicated than this because psilocybin is not the only active compound in these mushrooms. In fact, psilocybin actually turns into psilocin in the body. Psilocybin is a prodrug, so it gets dephosphorylated and it's actually the psilocin that crosses the blood brain barrier and has those effects. So they also measured the psilocin content in these mushrooms, which can vary wildly depending on the species and depending on the mushroom. But there's also these other compounds that we know a little bit less about or a lot less about, I should say, like baocystin, norbaocystin, and eruginacin. All of these things are hard to spell. Some of them are hard to say, uh, eruginacin in particular. But, you know, these different compounds potentially could have an impact on the effects of the mushroom. So you think about it, if each different mushroom has kind of a different signature or a different level of all of these different active compounds, well, for sure, maybe that could cause a difference in the perceived effects. Again, this is what people call the entourage effect or the idea that a cocktail of all these different compounds, depending on the concentrations, could cause different effects. This video was a clip from The Mushroom Show, which is the one place you need to be to stay on top of all the amazing things happening in the world of mushrooms. Click here to watch the full episode that this clip was taken from, and be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch the next release.